Hello everyone, today we're going to try something a little bit different here. I'm recording while I'm working uh, on this, so this is kind of all in real time, so there might be a bunch of clicking from my keyboard or from my Cintiq. Um, and you know, I don't even know if I'm going to use this audio or not, I might just re-record the audio and talk over, over the video after I edit this guy down. So real quick here for you guys, I just have a, a tutorial on how to project details from a mesh that has lost its subdivision levels back onto a mesh that, uh, that you reconstruct those subdivision levels for. And uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use DynaMesh, we're going to use ZRemesher, and we're going to use uh, Projection. And all of those things can be found right here under the tool palette. The projection is going to be under project, under your sub tool palette. And DynaMesh and ZRemesher are, of course, in the geometry sub palette of the tool palette. I think they're called pot palettes. <laughs> anyway, uh, so. I have this little frog guy here. Um, I made him a few months ago just as a fun little project. Um, I can't remember the name of the artist who did the original 2D concept off of the top of my head, but I will go ahead and pull up an image right here in the corner so you can see what his concept looks like. Actually, I have his name right here in front of me in this folder and his name is Morton Scalvik and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly but I'll go ahead and throw up a link throw up Chris <laughs> I'll go ahead and place a link down in the description for you guys and you can check out his stuff over on ArtStation so I'm just going to go ahead and high-res all this stuff out real quick just so we can get to the highest subdivision level of each tool that I have. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Alright. So, what I want to show you here, and there's lots of uh, different ways that you can use this projection method, but the method that I want to show you, or not necessarily the method because the method will always be the same, but the purpose for which I will be doing this is so that I can combine some parts of my frog here and reconstruct some subdivision levels from that. And uh, you, I'm just going to use ZRemesher to get some automatic retopology, but of course you can use um, you can use your manual retopo, like I, I retopo stuff in 3D coat, or you can do it in Maya or, or Max or whatever you're using, um, or even ZBrush. But uh, I am going to just go ahead and isolate a bunch of these parts just so I can see only Mr. Froge here. There we go. Awesome. So through here, we look at his body we see that his body and his legs are separated so if I grab his body here and I isolate it that's what it looks like by itself and actually if you look there his hands are connected so I was actually making this character to be 3d printed I SLA 3d printed him on a form 1 machine and um, currently I have a bunch of parts laying in, in my closet it was, a, it was an old uh, Form 1 Plus machine, and the bed and the laser were kind of... Well, the bed, we, we replaced a lot of different beds on it, but uh, the laser, unfortunately, was beginning to fail, um, which is why I was able to use it for free. <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, he didn't turn out super great, but, uh, you know, I still have the model here, and maybe I'll be printing him again in the future. I have a keyed version as well of this character, and maybe I'll bring that up and show that to you guys at another point when I uh, do a tutorial on how to key something for uh, 3D printing. So, let's go ahead 
and merge this body to these legs. And then I'm going to show you how we can smooth that out and reproject all those uh, details back into this guy. So what we're looking at right now is just the body and the legs together. And you know what, we'll go ahead and throw this head on here too, we might as well. Not gonna hurt anything. And if you look here, this overlapping is actually from a previous projection. That's how it's so close to each other there. Um, and if I do a Dynamesh between those two parts, we're actually gonna get some weird little pockets. And I'm just gonna push this in ever so slightly so that we can get rid of that little overlap as best as we can, just really quick. And um, uh, we'll probably still get a little bit of that, but maybe not quite as bad. If you look here, um, these lips are not merged together, so if we Dynamesh those, will def that will definitely happen. Um, which is fine, you know, if you're, if you're doing this for 3D printing, you're definitely going to have to do that. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at this section of the, the body here and, uh, and the legs and just kind of isolate these parts so that we can get a better view without those pieces getting in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and use my move brush and back face masking just to kind of pull this shape into the legs a little bit and I'm gonna do it on the legs as well. And we have all this really fine texture on there. Uh, that can definitely come through in projection, but that's definitely not going to come through in our print, unfortunately. Make sure you get the undergrundle, as they call it in the industry. Make sure that looks good. And we'll just go ahead and go with that. You know, I think that's going to be good for our purposes. We're going to have to... Um, fix that as we go after we remesh everything. So at this point, you know, we have subdivision levels on our body and on our legs. And then, and we want to get rid of this seam, you know, we want to merge this and we want to get rid of the seam, but we also want to keep our subdivision levels. And we want to do the same with the, uh, the headpiece up there. So what I'm going to do is grab this top piece, my head, and I have all these subdivision levels down here, five subdivision levels in my geometry palette. You know, we're at two million polys, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click Delete Lower. And from this point, I'm just gonna go to Merge and Merge Down. And the reason I deleted that before merging down is because this piece also has subdivision levels. And if, I, if, if at any point you merge two sub tools that both have subdivision levels, it's going to step through and reconstruct all those subdivision levels as it merges and uh, we don't really want to wait for that to happen so actually if we just go ahead and merge that head into the body no subdivision levels because our top one didn't so that's awesome that's exactly what we wanted merge that down and now we have all of our pieces together into one uh, one sub tool here now at this point I could click reconstruct subdivision and we're gonna go from 7 million down to 1.9 million, so now we have two subdivision levels. But uh, we don't need those subdivision levels right now, at least not yet. So, at this point, we are going to go ahead and Dynamesh this guy. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and figure out what resolution he needs to be. Probably 120, uh, 128 is going to be enough. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the recording while I do that so that we are not uh, sitting here waiting for that to happen. So be back in a sec. All right. So we are at 1.8 million polygons here. And that's going to be enough for our purposes today. So if we're looking here at this guy and we turn on our poly frame, that's shift F or just click this button over here for using the default uh, setup, we can see that these pieces are merged. That's fine. The head is now merged with 
the body there, great. And the legs are now merged with the body as well. So previously we had uh, that rope around his belly that kind of hid, uh, let me see here, Ooh. that hid what we were looking at there, which is fine. But if we wanted to print this guy separately as one piece like this, or just we didn't want to use the, the belt at all, the rope around his waist, you know, we can go ahead and use this process. So I have this mesh, it's DynaMesh together. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this guy. So now I have two of them, and then I'm going to run a Z ream mesh on him just to get some quick low resolution topology. And what I'm going to do for that is about 25,000 polys. That should be enough for our purposes here. Um, with that, you know, we should be able to step up back through those subdivision levels and reconstruct that geometry. So at this point, I am going to go ahead and reconstruct this geometry using the project all button under the project menu right here and I'm just going to project or I'm sorry I'm going to subdivide first do a projection and step up through each subdivision level doing that so I just have a shortcut key here for a solo mode which is right down here so we're looking at our low poly mesh this is good for our purposes here so again, I'm going to subdivide them once. Or actually, we're going to go ahead and undo that. Step back down. Problem that we might encounter while doing that is we might get a hole in our mesh. So what we want to do first, just as a quick precaution, is um, go ahead and go on down to poly groups and we're going to click auto groups and we're going to go ahead and turn on our poly frame again check out this guy control shift click him and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go to geometry uh, modify topology and delete hidden just to make sure that there's no uh, little extra hanging parts that we don't want. And then also, I'm going to go ahead and click close holes. And that's also gonna stop us from having any holes in our mesh as well. And then on my keyboard, I'm just gonna hit uh, hold control and press W. And what control W does is it, uh, it polygroups whatever you have masked. So if you have part of his arm masked and you press control W, it'll mask that or his legs or whatever you're, uh, you're working with. But if nothing is masked and you press Control W, it groups everything that's visible. So at this point, we can go ahead and go through with our original process of just pressing Control D to subdivide and clicking the project button over here. And you're gonna watch that projection in progress slider go through and it was so quick you didn't even see it. Now we're at 126K. Go ahead and subdivide again up to 500, project again. So what we're doing is because we have both of these uh, subtools visible, the details from this new mesh are, I'm sorry, the details from our old mesh, the high resolution 1.8 million polys is being projected onto our low res mesh at each subdivision level. So this is our, our new mesh with topology with these pieces welded together. Awesome, so we're gonna subdivide one more time here and go ahead and click project. All right, so at this point we have our character as a single piece, which is exactly what we wanted. We have all this and what's great about the way we duplicated this and used this is that when we duplicated this guy, it keeps our subdivision, or I'm sorry, our undo history. So we have 43 undos here. And what we can do is we can just go ahead and step back through all of that. And there's our high res mesh, all that. Look at that, all, all that's still there. And the reason that's all there is because when we duplicated this, we used the top 
subtool. When you duplicate something, the new subtool that gets created, uh, I, maybe I wouldn't call it the new subtool, but essentially when you duplicate, it creates a new subtool above the one that you were using and appends a number to it. So if you're using Final Form Froge 14, as I was, and you click duplicate on it, it becomes Final Form Froge 15, or in case, or in this case, because we already have that, 0, 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this mesh because I don't even need it anymore. I have everything I need in this mesh here, including my undos, if I want to get that mesh back. I just don't want to hold on to a, another mesh that's around 2 million polys just to kind of weigh down my scene. I don't really need it at this point. And I have uh, back saves that are recursive that I can return to at any point as well. So what I am going to do here is on the high poly mesh, I just have my trim dynamic brush here. I'm just, you know, going through and ever so slightly holding the alt key and attempting to fill in this slot as best as I can. And if you remember that I was talking about that texture earlier, some of that texture did end up coming through, but uh you know, that texture is definitely not going to come through on my print for this guy. Which is which is fine, you know, you can add that back into the physical sculpt if you want to do that. In my cases, that will hopefully come through in paint. So at this point, it's a pretty easy fix. We're able to just go ahead and smooth that out to get that to where we want. And then you still have these subdivision levels that can help you, you know, as you go through there. Maybe we grab a pinch brush and uh, we come up through the body here holding the alt key. And we're able to kind of carry that form and switch back to our trim brush to get rid of that sharp edge that we were getting there. Soften that up a tiny bit and just go ahead and work with this mesh until we get to a point that we like. That's the basic steps for using projection in ZBrush, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and keep messing with this. Whoopsie. But uh, hey, in the meantime, while I'm doing that, why don't you guys go ahead and leave me some comments down below if you have any questions about this process, if I went too fast somewhere, if you'd like me to go more in depth on something, or if you guys have an idea for another tutorial or another video that you would like to see, maybe a character, a speed sculpt, anything like that, please, please post that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it helped some of you out, and I just want to say thanks for stopping in, guys, and I will see you next time.